Hello everybody, welcome back. It is time for another controversial discussion topic. Uh, I am always on the lookout for new engines and tools that will speed up my development time and make the process easier. And today I am here to share with you my first bewildered impression of an engine called Gadot. I'm looking at this engine from the perspective of a long-time Game Maker Studio user. I've been with YoYo Games ever since Game Maker Studio 1.4 came out, and I'm still by far not the oldest user of this engine. It's also important to stress that this is essentially an opinion of an artist who got into game development and game programming out of necessity. I'm not a mathematician or trigonometry buff, I'm just a guy who wanted to make games and had no money to hire a programmer, so I had to learn the stuff myself. I didn't go to college for it, I didn't have a tutor, mentorship or any professional help outside of YouTube tutorials, help files and the forum discussions. I'm always on the lookout for more tools that I can learn to make my game development process faster and easier. In my entire lifetime, I can only create a finite amount of games, and thus, if there's a tool that can help me achieve something faster, it is a worthwhile investment to spend some time learning that tool. Maybe it will allow me to squeeze a few more games before I punch in my ticket. I was inspired to look into Godot after a certain event had taken place. Recently, YoYo Games, uh, the developer of Game Maker Studio, has decided to abandon their unlimited trial program where you had access to Game Maker Studio 2 free for an unlimited amount of time. However, you were limited to the amount of resources you could use as well as the limited uh, to export options. So you couldn't make a complete game using the trial, but you had no time constraint like a 30 day trial um, to evaluate the software. Essentially, you could explore and study the GML programming language, however, could not produce a standalone executable and could only run your game from within the trial version of the engine. Now, this may not have sounded like much, however, for anyone looking to test, learn and experiment with the game maker without dropping 120 Canadian rubles, this was an ideal option. Especially in my case, since I work as a freelance tutor, um, I teach kids game development and game programming, and the Game Maker trial version offered just the right amount of wiggle room to have the kids learn the game development basics without giving them too much to negate the need to buy the full license. You simply can't do anything more than learn in the trial version. Many of the things that we covered were Game Maker Studio engine specific details and mechanics, especially Game Maker Studio functions, because these are specific to the engine. And after about six to eight lessons, give or take, depending on a student, we would hit the upper limit of the free trial, and by then, it's been just enough time to have the student learn enough and showcase their progress to their parents. At which point I would propose to the parental units the option of buying either the one year subscription or the full lifetime license and nine times out of ten they would just go for the lifetime license just to save the trouble of renewal. This is all in the past now as YoYo Games has decided to ditch the old trial system for a 30 day trial. And now it's time to ditch Game Maker Studio for an alternative that cares about the educators who've been bringing revenue, growing their user base and funneling customers that will ultimately be keeping YoYo's lights on. Okay, okay, I know of all the flavors I could be, I decided to go for salt. Truth be told, Game Maker Studio hasn't changed, it's still a great development engine, but had YoYo Games not switched to a 30-day trial, I would have never been prompted to give Godot a shot and ultimately realize just how much Game Maker Studio pales in comparison to Godot Engine. So had it not been for YoYo, I'd probably still remain ignorant of Godot, so YoYo has really done goofed on this one. So this brings us to Godot. I've known of the existence of this engine for quite a while. I knew that it was free and I knew that I could do both 3D and 2D. 
The promotional graphics of the website look great, however, in my experience, smaller third-party engines with great promotional graphics would usually have a pool of veteran developers who have been with this engine for a very, very long time, and they can really push the engine to hell and back to create stunning-looking games. I've seen this done with GameMaker, I've seen screenshots and promo videos of 3D games that have been done by veteran GameMaker developers that make the engine look super advanced and powerful until you yourself try to tackle a similar aesthetic problem and realize that it's easier to ram a frying pan up your rear than try to repeat the same feat. What I'm talking about here is the fact that just because an engine can create these sort of stunning visuals or some sort of special mechanics does not mean that it's easy to do so. And that is certainly the case with these 3D games with GameMaker Studio. You can make 3D games, but you better be prepared to spend a metric ton of man hours trying to achieve the basic features that any other engine offers right out of the box. I also try to steer clear of any software that tries to be too many things at once as it usually ends up doing everything poorly. And this is probably primarily why GameMaker Studio is solely advertised as a 2D engine with some 3D capabilities. It's straightforward to learn 2D development is what allowed me to get into game dev in the first place. Also, to prove my point, GameMaker has a pretty atrocious image editor. I mean, it has its uses, but I often opt in to using animation and illustration programs like Krita for any projects worth the effort. It's free and it's well worth the time to learn. Now, when it comes to trying too many things at once, I was pleasantly surprised when Gadot proved me wrong on that one. Both its 2D and 3D development tool sets are those that can rival Unity and I dare even say Unreal Engine. Now, Gadot doesn't have an image editor, so you would still be using an external uh, program like Krita or GIMP or Paint.net, whatever you want. So Gadot developers do understand that concept. In fact, Gadot borrows a lot of good features from AAA engines, like for example, its scene tool, just like the, the scene tools you can find in Unreal Engine, where this feature allows you to prepare a fully programmed asset that can be deployed into any level with ease. Now you may think, gosh, that sounds an awful like objects in GameMaker Studio. Well, yes, except scenes allow you to create multi-object prefabricated scenes, create it once and deploy it anywhere. And that's the key term, multi-object scenes, where in GameMaker Studio you deal with each object individually, making anything that involves multiple objects eh, a little bit more involved. To give you an example of just how colossally more efficient Gadot's method of scenes is, let me demonstrate using one of my mechanics from Artag Rise. Here we have two lasers. Their basic mechanics are point at each other, toggle the laser on and off using the user set on and off delay times. One of the lasers needs to be set as the emitter, which is going to be emitting the laser beam itself. They can also move around the space with a preset speed and delay intervals. You can turn them on and off using switches, including the ability to drive multiple lasers with one switch and the ability to invert the switch input state. This would allow to have one switch drive multiple lasers and disabling one will in turn enable another. So coding the laser behavior is something that you'll have to do regardless of which engine you're using. That's not really what I'm trying to stress here. What I want to stress is how quickly you can deploy one of these lasers into any level you're building once you prepare that asset. So how do I set up a laser obstacle? So how do I set up a laser obstacle in GameMaker Studio? First of all, the two lasers that come in a pair is the same laser object. So I only program one laser object. I have to place both objects in the level, then open both of their object instances and copy and paste the piece of code that contains uh, the different parameters I need to be setting this instance to. One of the instances will be set as an emitter. Then copy the instance names into one another, set up the various values for things like delays without accidentally deleting all the code, and then run the game and test. 
If you want the lasers to move, I have to define the horizontal and vertical movement in pixels, run the game, see if the movement fits the correct space, return and edit if not, rinse and repeat. If there's a switch, I need to go to the switch, get its unique instance name, copy the emitter laser, go back to the emitting laser and paste it in the switch ID. Now calm down idiot. I know you're violently typing in the comments about instance variables. It is a fresh feature. I know it exists and I was going to transition from instance code to instance variables, but now it seems kind of like a moot point because there are better solutions. So I know that they exist. This system was already implemented before instance variables were a feature in GameMaker Studio, so just calm your tits for a moment. Even with instance variables, the process is no less involved. It just emits the need to copy and paste the code snippet, which arguably saves you about 5 seconds tops when you're in the groove of level creation. The rest of copying and pasting is still just as much involved. This may not seem like a lot until you realize that I'm making a survival platformer game where I need to create some levels with dozens of these laser sets and a game needs to have hundreds of levels that can have these lasers in the first place. And this is only one asset and it's one of the less involved ones. So now let's see how I can do this in Gadot. I create a scene which contains within itself both lasers and the markers for movement range. I already programmed the lasers to point to each other, turn the laser beam on and off depending on the timers, and read the switch inputs if there are any defined. Then I go to the test level, drop the laser scene as an instance, edit its children and reposition the lasers whatever I want. One of the many features Godot offers is the export variable option, which acts just like an instance variable in GameMaker Studio. Everything is already predefined here. Just select the switch you'd like the laser to read the input from, input the values for timer delays, inversion and so on and so forth, and you're good to go. No copying of instance names, no fiddling with IDs, the process is streamlined. Okay, so you have the two examples. The main difference is the time it takes to deploy each one. Because Godot offers a scene-based workflow, you can prepare groups of objects that are supposed to interact with one another and deploy them anywhere you want. Another thing that impressed me is the built-in and competent lighting system. Another major shortcoming of GameMaker Studio. For the longest time, I thought that the lack of a built-in 2D lighting system in a 2D engine was standard. I thought that spending a month coding your own shadow system was a part of this whole game development gig. And that was another thing that Godot proved me wrong. So how did I go about creating my lighting in the GameMaker Studio project? Well, I had to pretty much code a tool that worked from within the game at runtime. You decouple your camera from the player and moved into the level while the game is running, placing lights, drawing shadows, light masks, setting up various properties of the lights, and the whole process would take me anywhere from one to two hours for the lighting alone for a single level. And keep in mind, I'm not accounting for the time it took me to actually develop this lighting system in the first place. Not only that, you have to develop it in a way that brings it up to a place where it's competent enough to actually be useful in your project. Then I had to code in the saving system, which would save the level lighting and shadow data into a separate file, which I would then fish out of the temporary folder and import back into the engine as an included file, at which point I would code in a reloader program that would read through each of the level files and load up the lighting and shadow data in place. A good month and a half of that, and I barely got a marginally acceptable lighting tool which I could put together with my own skill set at the time. Now, how do you create the lights in the shadows in Godot? I place a light, I add a light mask, I set the color and size, and I toggle the shadows. All of which takes roughly about 10 seconds. And the best part is that it's immediately rendered 
from within the level editor. So I'm up against the choice between either a month of coding, my own finicky half-functioning lighting system, plus one to two hours per level to build the lights, or literally taking about 10 to 15 minutes to set up the lights for each level in Gadot. What do you want to spend your time on? And I know that they are very well can be two arguments. For one, in Game Maker Studio you don't have to make such an overly complicated system, and two, there are lighting resources available on the market. In my case, the two arguments are related, since out of the numerous marketplace lighting and shadow solutions I've tried, all of them require you to retrofit and dramatically change the foundation of your game to fit the requirements of the lighting system. And if you wanted to do the opposite, retrofit the lighting system to your game, you'd have to deep dive into the source code of the programmer who developed the tool, the marketplace asset, and start making sense of how the core lighting system works in order to start rewriting it to fit your own game. The lighting system has to be flexible enough to fit most game resolutions and styles. It's not the game that needs to be retrofitted to the lighting system asset. And to answer the argument of why I had to make a system so complicated, well, the answer is time spent developing each level. I had to develop a tool that would allow me the fastest development time per level when it comes to lighting, which in case of Game Maker Studio means that I had to make it so that I can assess the quality of lights right in the game. Game Maker Engine does not allow you to do this, so I had to do it during runtime. And if you do it during runtime, you have to figure out how to save it. So that's where the saving system comes in. You save something, you have to load it. That's where the loading system comes in. This is a sort of a game that would offer hundreds of levels and all of the lighting systems in the marketplace require you to run the game before you can assess the lighting placement and parameters in the first place. So even all the marketplace assets have to have you run the game in the first place. You have to place your lights, set up the values, compile your game, assess the lights and readjust accordingly. This is due to the fact how GameMaker handles level creation. There's no rendering taking place in the level editor. Shaders, effects, particles can only be assessed when you run the game. Gadot, in turn, runs the lighting and shadow simulation right from within the editor. Same thing with particles, same thing with shaders and materials. Which means that what you see in the editor is what you get in the game. This immensely speeds up your development. We're talking about astronomical difference in time spent. No compiling, no running, no changing codes and running the game again to assess your changes. No running blind. When you have to develop hundreds of levels and you need tools that promote rapid development, Gadot gives GameMaker a run for its money. And even that is absurd considering that Gadot is a free engine. Now, I know that not everybody will be enticed to download Gadot and try it out, so here's a screenshot of all the various major features you have access to right out of the box, no extra coding required. So perhaps you'll spot something you've been wanting to get to work in Game Maker Studio, but couldn't due to its lack of feature set or complicated setup that requires you to have years of coding experience to be able to tackle. So I've been experimenting with this engine. A few notable things have completely blown my mind as a Game Maker Studio user. These are things that Game Maker Studio does not offer out of the box. These are the things that you have to rely on community-made assets to compensate for, some of which you will have to spend months developing your own. Some of which will most likely not be compatible with the sort of game you're making if it's anything more than a cookie cutter, cut and paste game. These are things that I've been told should be basic to any competent engine. Here's a rapid fire list of features that have made me continue exploring the engine and that's just the tip of the iceberg. Physically based rendering materials for 2D sprites, tiles and 3D models. Built in easy to set up normal maps for 2D assets including tiles. Built in comprehensive 2D lighting and shadow system. Mixing 3D into 2D games 
and I'm personally looking forward to using this one for my game, which despite the time and effort it will require, I decided to move from Game Maker Studio and into a Godot project, mainly because of all the features I've discovered will super shrink the amount of time it takes to create the game content levels, and this will be just a smart decision in the long run. Since as pointed before, instead of spending a couple of hours building lights, I now spend maybe about 10-15 minutes, times 100 levels, and you can see why moving to Godot now would just make my life a lot easier in the long run of the project. Built-in camera smoothing. Built-in parallax backgrounds that can use virtually any graphical resources. Tiles, sprites, particles, anything. You can use anything for parallax backgrounds. Efficient and competent armature and skeleton support. This one may sound weird, but before trying Godot, I was experimenting with an engine called Leadworks. It was fine until I found out that the way it implements armatures is so taxing on your system that I could barely run 10 armature characters at once. That's nothing, you can't even make a zombie game out of that. Godot handles this with ease, where I can run dozens upon dozens of armature bodies even on my 10 year old development machine. There is no excuse for Leadworks. Oh, and I'm not even gonna mention armatures in Game Maker Studio because there are non-existent, and the only way that Game Maker currently supports it is via a community-made shader that is still a major pain in the ass to run bone animations with. Now, you might say it is unfair to talk about bad 3D development in Game Maker Studio because, well, it's not a 3D engine, and that's fair enough. However, this is yet another reason to give Godot a try. You can do 2D and 3D game development in Godot. Because it's an open source project, an entire community works hard to build the engine into a behemoth that has already surpassed Game Maker in both 2D and 3D development capabilities, speed, and feature set. I dare even say that it rivals AAA 3D engines. Oh, and the side note, God forbid you so much as mention any other engines on the discussion forum or comments because then you're gonna get the angry letter from the moderators or developers showing just how insecure they are about their own product. They know Godot poses a real threat and they censor any discussions of superior engines on their platforms. Now, I don't blame them. They gotta protect their bread and butter, even though it's already starting to spoil and sprout fungal cultures while falling behind the competition. Again, didn't mean to add the salt to your bread and butter toast. So once again, the important thing to note here is speed. Yes, Game Maker Studio has the sound emitters and have all the commands and functions you need to create parallax backgrounds, and you can dive into shaders, surfaces, and vertex shapes to create your own lighting systems. You have the tools to do almost anything, but you have to ask yourself the question. Could you be doing something better with your time? Could you be working on a game campaign or game content? new mechanics and presentation, new assets, quests, stories, or do you want to spend the finite time of your life filling in and compensating the lacking features and shortcomings of an engine you're considering for your next game project? The engines are evolving. They are here to handle the basics for you. And for the longest time, I thought that Game Maker was the pinnacle of how much foundational work an engine can handle for you. I was wrong on so many levels. Godot goes above and beyond. It stresses the speed of development, and I was bewildered to find out that about 80% of features I had spent weeks to months coding and developing from scratch in Game Maker Studio were already present in Godot. The lighting and scene system alone cut my development time per level down to less than half of what it took to create a single level in Game Maker. And maybe it just so happens that Godot luckily fits my particular game project's genre but I really doubt that's the case. After working in Godot for a few weeks and witnessing how much more it offers over Game Maker Studio, 
it does make me wonder what is it that I've spent my money on when I bought Game Maker Studio 2, simply because Godot has shown me the bar of how far an engine can go. The only possible saving grace for Game Maker is that it currently offers console exports on top of what Godot offers like Windows, Mac, Linux, iOS, Android, and HTML5. However, even with that in mind, if you make a successful game in Godot, porting it to consoles is the least of your problems, as by then your game will have made enough income to cover the cost for hiring a studio or possibly even Godot developers to port the game for you. In conclusion, I'm always on the lookout for new engines and tools that will speed up my development time and make the process easier. Now this won't necessarily mean that I'm going to be jumping ship and abandoning Game Maker in favor of Godot. I have decided to go for a mighty cynical and sardonic presentation for this one and I apologize if some feelings have been butthurt in the process. Really, I'm just trying to get you fuckers to watch this entire video, cause you're humans and you find conflict and drama fascinating. Realistically, I don't think I'll be abandoning Game Maker Studio just yet, because I really believe in broadening your palette instead of substituting with new colors. I've worked with Game Maker Studio, App Game Kit, Leadworks, Unreal Engine, and now I can add Godot to my roster of options for my next project. And who knows, perhaps Yo-Yo can see past my sarcasm and fish out the criticisms out of this rant. And perhaps next version of Game Maker Studio, or possibly one of the updates for the current one, we will start seeing all of the things that make development in Godot so much faster incorporated into Game Maker Studio, and I will have less incentive to continue with Godot for my projects. I am really hoping to see all the things that make Godot great also be implemented in Game Maker Studio, because Game Maker Studio is an engine that got me into this whole mess. <laughs> so, I would definitely like to see a lot of these features in Game Maker Studio.